Hey, bro. So we uh, we're here to chat about our experiences on March eleventh, two thousand and eleven. Ten years ago now. So I'm gonna Madness. quickly bring up a, a couple of stats about this. This is this will blow your mind. All right. Please. We already know it was a magnitude nine nine point one. All right. But it was mm. the fourth most powerful earthquake in the world since nineteen hundred. Right. It's kind of crazy. Wow. It moved the entire island of Honshu 2.4 meters to the east. Wow. I yep. did not know that. And really? it shifted. It, listen to this one. It shifted the earth on its axis, estimates between 10 and 25 centimeters. Wow. And also oh, hold it, hold it. It increased the Honshu. earth's rotational speed by 1.8 microseconds. 1.8 microseconds yeah. per day increased in speed, the That's rotational crazy. speed of the earth. It's kind of crazy shit. It's madness. But what you said there earlier, you said it moved Honshu. It moved the so entire island moved. of Honshu 2.4 meters. So it's changed the shape of Japan. It's literally well, changed the, island, the shape the of Japan. Shifted. What were you doing no, on that incredible. day? On that day, I was, in, um, I was working in, in a British recruitment company. We were located in Akasaka Twin Tower at that time. And, you know, just to give you a bit of background, before uh, the earthquake happened, about a week before, an earthquake happened in New Zealand, in the New Zealand office. And what happened in the Hayes New Zealand office? Oh, do you know that? You, you knew that? I didn't know about I knew about, about the New Zealand one, but I didn't know about the Hayes office. So there was a, so during that New Zealand earthquake, about a week before, the stairwell had collapsed in on itself. So they sent a Hayes. New Zealand sent Hayes Global a picture of the, the crushed offices and the crushed stairwell. And looking at that crushed stairwell was really scary because it was like four floors, like one set of stairs here, another set. Of stairs. They just completely like sandwiched on top of each other. So they had sent that and we we're like, wow, that's, that. you know, hope no one died. I hope no one was hurt. It was a very scary looking scene. Anyway, cut forward, fast forward a week. Um, there was an earthquake on Wednesday around lunchtime. And then there was an earthquake on Thursday. The next day around lunchtime mm -hmm. and by this time we we're thinking okay there's earthquakes coming at lunchtime every day and then friday the same kind of earthquake happened right so but those other earthquakes lasted about what 10 15 maybe 20 seconds not that long under a minute for sure so um when friday happened the first 30 40 50 seconds were you know we were just thinking oh again this is the third day is happening now it's almost what was it 2 50 p.m or something like that right. similar time um this is gonna pass so i was just like everyone calm down you know nothing to worry about it's fine Earthquake is a little bit longer, right? So I was like, let me stand up. I walked over to the window. We've got these big ass windows, right? <laughs> so I walk over to the window and um, and I, I just remember looking looking outside and I see the cars starting to pull over, you know, diagonally pull over, you know, as you do when an emergency vehicle goes past. You're supposed to do that during an earthquake. And uh, and then one guy just got out of his car and he was scratching his head. That scene of this guy like scratching his head and looking around, I don't know, it just, it set something off inside me. It was just this, it made me feel scared for the first moment because I was laughing and joking. And then our Australian senior manager, this guy is, is cool. Usually he's a tough guy, cool under pressure. He's famous for that, right? He looks at the office of 150 of us, maybe it was, right? And he went, and, and by the way, he had a broken leg. So his whole leg was in a cast from knee, knee down. His whole leg was in a cast. His, his wow. leg was in a cast and he had two crutches. That's how he was walking around. He was hobbling around like that for, for about two weeks. He had a rugby, rugby injury. And he, was, he looked around and he went, everybody! run <laughs> he dropped his crutches wow <laughs> do you know what he set he set panic through everyone's hearts everyone even japanese people were like waiting under the desk you know like as you would right that, that's how japanese people are instructed to and, and taught to handle a uh, an earthquake just stay below to stay stay under a desk or stay under a chair or something when they heard him, he's a powerful voice, a bellowing voice. Everybody, run! Oh, my God, the panic went mad. Everyone oh ran God. outside. One guy, one Canadian guy, just threw a Chinese guy. He took the Chinese guy and he just threw it and she smashed through the wall, big hole in the wall. Everyone was just, just stampeding through like gazelle. And then when we got to the stairwell, right, down seven floors, it was really... Oh, by the way, before we left, by the way, when he said everybody run, I forgot to mention the sounds, bro, yeah? First of all, it sounded like... I've never witnessed these sounds in first person ever, only in movies. It sounds like something in the Titanic. You hear these metal sounds like you're in the belly 
of the ship. Mm. So you're not on the top, you're not on the board, you're inside the belly of the ship and you can hear the grinding of metal against you. Imagine hearing that in an office. The only thing I was thinking is that, oh my God, these metal beams, they're going to collapse onto themselves because this was not a building that was meant to, you know, didn't have those base stabilizers, right? The tremor wow. stabilizers, yeah. as you might call them. It doesn't have that because we're sitting on a hill. So um, you, we started panicking and then on the walls, cracks started to appear. And then we just bought, and then that was a moment when Dean was like, everybody run. And we just, that was it, man. We, and when we got outside, we just remember seeing all of the Akasaka Towers and Rapongi. they were like swaying oh. like people in Rapongi, right? Yeah. <laughs> just like drunk people. It was horrible. We to get to the, uh, get to the evacuate, the, the kids' school children's schoolyard, I think it is. We have to go to school parks or schoolyards because underneath there, there's no, um, there's no gas pipes. Right. So there shouldn't be any explosions there, which is the worst thing that kills people during earthquakes, right? Fires and explosions. Right. So it was, uh, it was madness. Wow. Where were you, man? So I was in um, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. <laughs> That's where you're working there, right? I was working at Bank of America in Nihonbashi. And we had that big one on the Wednesday that shook for like 30 seconds. I was at my desk. I'll never forget it. We had like another one not as big on the Thursday. And then the Friday was just like the Wednesday one. But it just kept going on and on and on. And then we were all just looking at each other. There was nobody saying run. But we all just kind of got up. And everyone just, without even saying anything, just shuffled out. And um, down the fire escapes, everybody went down. And we, we met on the first floor. And then when the earthquake went stopped, everything seemed cool. It was about an hour. You know, we were downstairs on the first floor. Then we went back up to our desks. Yeah. And that's when they had on the TV the images of the, what the tsunami had done. Mm -hmm. So that tsunami had ripped yeah, through sure. that entire town within that one hour that I was downstairs on the first floor. Like, I just never forget the, the, the red of the fire, the fires that were ripping through all those towns. You know, there's footage online you can see. People have dash cams on their cars and they're driving to escape up to the mountains, yeah? And all these old people, and other people who didn't escape, they're driving by and they're capturing all these people on footage as the cars go by them. And all those people died. I think like 20,000 people are either dead or unidentified or, or missing. You know, so yeah, you're watching it on the news, right? Yeah, we came back up and they had, we had NHK on, on the news. Yeah, I remember I was watching that. The water just seeping in. It just kept going forward, just, just into land like and then taking, taking, out, with it. taking out cars, buildings. Yeah, and then man, for the next month, was, uh, right, there had to be at least a thousand uh, aftershocks every day for at least the next month. You know what? Thousands right. of that, in that, that one day, month. We all we all gathered in the in the restaurant, the cafe, whatever you want to call it, and you know everyone was discussing their shock, right, and how they were feeling. And then, of course, there was no more transport. There was no more trains, no more buses. I don't know how you got back, right? We had to walk back from. I had to walk back from Akasaka. To Ikebuka, which doesn't actually sound that long, but it was a very scary walk. Do you know why? Because it, I can't remember, it took hours. And first of all, I was looking for my roommate and I was looking for my friend, um, you know, just to see if they were safe, right? And uh, I, um, I had to walk through Shinjuku West Side, which is skyscraper city, yeah. you know, the skyscraper town. The West Side Shinjuku. Right. Do you know how scary that was to walk yeah, through? I I just, oh my days! It's gonna happen again. These buildings are gonna fall on my head. All these irrational thoughts. But you know, one thing I was so surprised about. Yeah, even during that time, like people were going to the shops and the companies, and there were people were like lining up, man. Even after the earthquake, like at that moment where you, you know, you saw the tsunami, you, you in your head you think, oh, more earthquakes gonna happen. Uh, you know, there could be more casualties and so on and so forth. Like let's start stocking up as you do, right? You stock up. In all the companies I was going to, people were still lining up properly, man. They weren't yeah, like, um, yeah. it, it, people were panicked, but they weren't, they were still orderly panicked, if that makes sense. Right, right, right. Like typical Japanese fashion, right? So, yeah, right. that was, uh, it was one nice thing to see. I yeah, was living in, in Shibuya, right? And I walked home from the Hombashi. It took three and a half hours. And the, yeah. what I remember the biggest thing was, is every single bike shop, bicycle shop, in, on the entire way back on that three and a half hour walk was sold out of bicycles. And I remember for See, weeks afterwards, by, the, right? the convenience stores were empty for weeks afterwards. Yeah. You know what I was, it, and after that, do you remember straight after that, it was the, the radiation scare, man. That was yeah. mad. Do you remember that? We, we had to become radiation experts overnight. I, I put on a, one of them little, 
one of them little surgical masks. So that, what's that going to do for radiation? And then like, you switch to like the ones that we like wear now for you know, gas COVID. masks. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the news was sensationalizing. Like acid rain is approaching. You know, <laughs> the chemicals from the, the nuclear reactor have gone up, and they, you know, and they're going to rain down uh, in Tokyo at this time, at this time, and this day, you know in this area. And yeah, you know. mm. Merrill Lynch was sending us um, internal emails every hour, uh, refuting everything that was on the news. There's no need to panic. This is not true because the French, remember the French, they all went home or everybody yeah. went to Osaka. Right. Yeah. But a good Merrill fun. Lynch yeah. didn't want anybody to leave. And they were, they were really, oh, really, yeah, they were putting out propaganda saying like Tokyo is safe. There's no need to go home. You know, uh, this, what you've seen on the news is not true. Don't close those accounts. Keep working. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. I got to say, Hayes is great. Hayes said, no more work. There's no need to work. We are closing the whole company down. We will let you know when the company's up and running again. We're like, oh, okay, fantastic. And then obviously they were keeping in touch with us via emails. But yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because one of my clients, I, I heard about a long time later, I was laughing. He was, he's working in a Japanese securities company, like your, like your company. And he said on that floor, there was like a hundred Japanese people and there was two French people. And when the earthquake happened, the Japanese people did what they were supposed to do, what they've been taught. They, they kind of hit down. The two French guys, they just got up and slapped their laptops down and just ran. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the French were gone within, <laughs> within within days. They were out of the country, like not just out of Tokyo. Like, no, I'm joking. I shouldn't yeah, say that. Just, that. <laughs> out of the entire country, it was it was incredible. Also, one of the biggest things I remember is that for the next like two weeks, up to a month, even all of Tokyo was entire pitch black, and they had this big campaign called Setsuden that went on for like almost a year, like to save electricity because of the nuclear power plant problems. Yeah. That was crazy. I don't forget. I went to, I don't know if you were there, but we, I was in Yoyogi park and Eric was there. We were there then Rocky was there too. We're all there actually. We might've been. Yeah. I was. And, yeah. I, and I said to Eric, like, what are you going to do, man? This is like typical Eric. Cause like, I was like, what, should I go home? Should I stay? And Eric was like, he goes to me he goes, you know what? Japan's been good to me. I ain't leaving her now. Yeah. All right. Eric always yeah. had good little pieces of advice like that, you know, rest in peace. We did some volunteer work as well. Um, after about, after about, oh, when was it? So wait, hold on, March. It was May. It was a month and a half after. Right. And uh, we went to Ishinomaki, which is in Miyagi Kem. It was one of the main areas that was hit. And Ryan, I went here for um, for a, a week, around a week, I think it was. We just went, It was in the middle of Ramadan as well. So I was fasting. Right? It wasn't baking, baking hot, but it was hot enough to just, you know, to do physical labor every day. That's what we were doing. We're putting the mask on, putting the helmet on, uh, taking your, uh, what do you call it, your, your hammer. I don't know if there's a proper word for it. And then uh, all kinds of metal equipment to smash stuff, clean stuff, break stuff down, fix stuff, reinstall stuff, clean the paint off, clean the oil off. So we were there for a week to do a lot of stuff. And then... Um, it, when we got to space it was it was nasty because first of all the stench it was disgusting you know i, I, I we had a lot of time to talk to the locals also I, I didn't have any lunch time right because uh, everyone's eating lunch and i thought i don't want to sit with everyone while eating i'm right. in the middle of fasting so i'm just gonna go and talk to the locals so i went and talked to the locals so many different people and i'll never forget what one old woman said to me she said that basically she says it was like somebody took for all the people in this area and just put us all in a blender and just blended us around and then just poured us back out again over here. And wow. she said, for days, all you can hear is people saying, help me, please, I'm dying, I've lost my legs. Help me, please, I've lost my hands. Help me, where's my daughter? All they can hear is that stuff, but you can't go out there, it's too difficult. What are you gonna, there's all debris, there's cars, bits of car. There was a ship on top of a house, like wow. right in front of me. It might've been a boat, I can't remember, but it was big. And uh, there's all, it was horrible. By the way, nighttime was scary as hell, man. It's just, the smell, the idea of it. And everywhere you go, the houses were skeletons from the under the first floors. So the second floors are intact, but the first floors have been completely wiped out. The, the structure of the house is just there. That's it. So what people are doing, what people have had forced to do is find bits of debris, like a washing machine or a desk, and use that 
as a stairway to climb up to the second floor and live wow. on the second floor. They've turned their kitchens up. So these are old people, difficult situation. But all you can see everywhere is the oil mark, the black oil mark everywhere, right? It's of where the water came to. And Ryan, I remember one of those days I went to, um, there was this schoolyard where I, I didn't know any of this at the time. I only found out because I was exploring on my own. I took a bicycle and I was just exploring. And then I'll come back and ask the locals um, about what I just saw and what is that? And what is that? I went to a schoolyard. This place was messed up because all you see is in the schoolyard on, on, on the front, there's, you know, the main playground area. There's a big clock and it's stopped at 250. It wow. stopped. It's there, it stopped at 250, right? went inside the classrooms every single classroom i went into was stopped at the exact same minute 250 i was getting kind of freaked out there's a kind of weird feeling going inside me because i was exploring the space and i was like oh this is really weird and then i remember there was a weird smell um it was different to the smell of the actual village area the, 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 the village area what can i let me describe that one to you the main area we we're working on it smelled like dead it smelled like dead fish left to rot Dead meat and fish left to rot for a long time is disgusting. But anyway, just going back to the schoolyard, just so I can finish up, um, is I was just walking through, we were having a look. And then I got to this one, these kind of big metal doors. So I think they were like, they were like the fire exit doors. And I pushed it open, Ryan. I swear to God, pushed it open. And then it, 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 was, it was a bit of an effort. And once it opened, the floor was black. I didn't really pay attention to it. So I'm, I'm walking up the stairs now. And I'm hearing crunch, 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 like about two, three crunch steps, right? I looked down. It wasn't black. It was dead flies, right? Wow. They had all been locked. Somebody had locked the doors up on the upper floor and then this floor. And then I started kicking these flies out of the way. I was like, oh, this is nasty. So I'm moving there. And I was like, what the hell is this? So I go up to there, have a look at the roof, have a look at the school, so on and so forth. When I get back later, I asked them, what was that school? What was, you know, what was they were like, yeah, there's some really sad stories there. One of the teachers took many kids into a room and hoping that the water wouldn't rise that high and they all died in that room. So what was the stairwell then? Because I went to the stairwell and they went, oh, you went to the stairwell? Well, that's where all, we kept all the body parts. And they put them in there. So obviously that's where these flies were coming out, right? All the maggots were eating their bodies and so on. Oh, it was nasty. It was really nasty, man. Wow. That stayed with me. That stayed with me. It was... Uh... What's it like in Australia? Are there any earthquakes in Australia? Not much, right? No, you have natural very disasters, real. bushfires. Very real, yeah. We have... Uh, no yeah bushfires but you know they gave a tsunami warning it was terrible though up north the other day but other than that and all the australians go surfing they're like tsunami let's, <laughs> let's take the surfboards out <laughs> <I'm joking>. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, i'll never forget no but I was, you guys are, but... I was going to um i was taking my my third dan for aikido on march 17 right and my yeah. sensei was teaching a class on March 12 at 6.30 in the morning. Literally like hours, you know, later. And I'll never forget. I was like, I was like, wow, I wonder if I'm going to be able to get to class. This is like the, you know, the mindset of a martial artist because like, just want to go training. And I, I, I walked up to the station at 5.30 in the morning. Right. And the trains were running as normal. Right. Because they hadn't been running really? all night. But yeah. at, at 5 30 the next the, day, the next day they were all running. I got on the first train and went out and I went to training as usual. Yeah, well, I went back to normal yeah, life next day straight. Got on at 5 30 in the morning and wow. it was, there were people on there just like going to work, doing the normal thing. This one thing I love about Japan that these natural disasters, what they do, they, it's just people's ability here to just go back to normal and just do their best, right? right. Just to, you know, gambaru, you know, you know what's it, gaman suru, and to do as best as they can, right? Just, you know, and to look after each other as much as they can, as they did with all the kind of earthquake disaster support. Um, and, you know, like there's so many st stories of heroes during that period, man. Um, so many that stuck out to me. Um, what was that one that was that, that famous, oh, what was her name? I think it was Miki Endo. Mm -hmm. Might want to type that in later, but her name is Miki Endo and she... She was in, not Ishinomaki, she was in a slightly northern area in Miyagi. And um, she, she was the announcer, you know, the earthquake announcement where they were saying uh, a tsunami is coming in. Um, yeah, I, well, I can't remember. You know, the, the kind of the, the audio they broadcast yeah, across yeah. the whole city. So she stayed in there and she said, she, was, she said, the tsunami is approaching. Everyone evacuate to higher ground. And then she'll wait like five to 10 seconds. And she say, the tsunami is approaching. Everyone evacuate to higher ground, obviously in Japanese. And she kept saying this. And then everyone had evacuated her place of work. They'd evacuated as well. And they were like, come on, Mickey, let's go, let's go, let's go. And she was like, if I go, then 
no one's going to be able to do this. So she continued staying and continually announcing the same thing until it suddenly went silent. And obviously she was dead, right? Um, oh, so she, she stayed to a minute. But there's a lot of people that said she died. Yeah, she stayed in there to the last minute because she said that I have to because there's old people who are probably not taking this seriously or not understanding. And then old people said, there was a, there was a few old people that said, yeah, she did help us out because we weren't taking it seriously. But she kept saying it. So we thought, okay, it's time to move. And they all went up to high ground. So she saved numerous lives, countless lives. I don't know how many, but she, she, uh, she died in the process, man. So... That's yeah sad. yeah yeah it was good talking to you on this thanks for thanks for having me on bro so it's it's 10 years on march 11 in that time we've both lost our two close friends eric and rocky since that day but um you know we're still here time. yeah here we are yeah we are it's a topic for another time those guys we should definitely do that um, definitely, yeah a lot of stuff has happened to us since the time you know but yeah i've known ryan for 12 years I've known you for since 2008, I think. Yeah. Long time. I met you through Rocky. In 2008, right? Through Rocky. We met yeah. through Rocky, yeah. Of course, I met most of my early friends through Rocky. <laughs> met, you know, Rocky uh, Rocky was amazing. Yeah. Uh, essential part of my life, in, instrumental part of my life, and uh, taking the route I did in many ways. So thank God for having him as a friend at one point, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. All right, bro. Thanks so much for having me, bro. All right, All right man. Take care.